Anarcho-Communism Anarcho-Communism combines characteristics of anarchy and communism, advocating for the abolition of private property but the retention of personal property and collectively owned items, goods, and services. Personal property includes items intended for personal use, such as a toothbrush, a house, clothes, and a vehicle. The owner has the right to exclude others from personal items. Private property, on the other hand, usually refers to something that generates value for its owner, like a factory or a mine. Private property usually generates capital without the owner necessarily having to perform any physical labor. Anarcho-communism believes in the abolition of the state and all structures of capital, leading to a stateless, classless, and post-monetary society where the population is given full control over policymaking. Neoliberalism Neoliberalism has multiple competing definitions. It's generally associated with policies like privatization, deregulation, globalization, free trade, and reductions in government spending in order to increase the role of the private sector in the economy and society. It's sometimes also associated, on the libertarian left side, with managerial capitalism, which advocates for the dilution of ownership within society to a point where owners can no longer exert power over businesses, and rather this power being moved towards a professional manager class. Today, the term neoliberalism is usually thought to have a highly negative connotation. Social democracy. Social democracy advocates for economic and social interventions to promote social justice within a capitalist-oriented, mixed economy with both private and public businesses. It likes strong welfare programs, regulation of the economy in the general interest, and prefers reforms rather than revolutions. It likes the liberal democratic framework with separation of religions from the government, elections between different political parties, etc. Social democracy usually achieves the execution of welfare programs through progressive taxation. Social liberalism. While social democracy says that poor people should be helped through a strong welfare state, social liberalism focuses on making social mobility easier and on providing more equality of opportunities rather than equality in all domains. It likes a little bit of intervention from the government into the economy in the name of ensuring economic justice as well as civil liberty. Social Capitalism Social capitalism is a combination of social democracy, social liberalism, and capitalism. Third Way the third way tries to reconcile right-wing and left-wing politics, combining stances from social democracy and social liberalism. It supports workfare, which is a governmental plan under which people are required to accept public service jobs or to participate in job training to obtain the benefits. It also seeks a compromise between a purely free economic system as supported by classical liberals and a welfare state as supported by social liberals. One of the third way's key goals is to create a social investment state, which helps people climb the social ladder through workforce development and education, rather than handouts. Marxism. Marxism has developed over time into various branches and schools of thought, so no single, definitive Marxist theory exists. Classical Marxism seeks to create a communist society. It makes a distinction between the minority who owns the means of production, called the bourgeoisie, and the vast majority of the population who produce goods and services, called the proletariat. It says that capitalism exploits and oppresses the proletariat, making it an economically unsustainable model as it causes proletarian revolutions. Marxism also believes that history can be viewed in stages of development based on which class holds a dictatorship over the other classes, and that today, the world is under the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. Following the overthrow of the bourgeoisie, Marxism believes that a dictatorship of the proletariat must be established to eradicate capitalism and begin the transition to communism. This stage, where the working class has absolute power over all other classes and has ownership of the means of production, is usually called socialism. Leninism Leninism, also known as Bolshevism, believes in the establishment of a dictatorship of the proletariat led by a revolutionary vanguard party. The revolution vanguard party should be composed of the most educated workers, with the objective of educating larger sections of the working class and starting the revolution. Neo-Libertarianism Neo-libertarianism thinks that the libertarian's value of freedom from interference by other people is incompatible with a strictly limited government, and thus, it is generally supportive of government involvement in society as long as it promotes greater liberty. It is sometimes associated with neoconservatism, which is the idea that typically advocates the promotion of democracy and interventionism in international affairs, including peace through strength. Classical Liberalism Classical liberalism thinks that individual freedom and a free market create a balanced economic equilibrium as long as monopolies aren't allowed to develop and destroy competitiveness. It sees free trade as a path to universal peace and prosperity, and it likes as little government intervention as possible. If compared to social liberalism, it thinks more negatively about social policies and taxation, and it advocates deregulation. Anarcho-capitalism 
Anarcho-capitalism is anarchist because it doesn't like a centralized state, and it's capitalist because it likes systems of private property enforced by private agencies, free markets, and self-ownership. As no centralized state would exist, there would be no taxation, and private companies would take the role of the police. Nationalism Nationalism holds the belief that the nation should be congruent with the state. A nation is a large type of social organization where a collective identity has emerged from a combination of shared features across a given population, such as language, history, ethnicity, etc. A state is a centralized political organization that imposes and enforces rules over a population within a territory. One of nationalism's key goals is to maintain its sovereignty over its homeland, usually through a nation-state. It holds that each nation should govern itself, free from outside interference. When a nation puts its own interest above all others at any cost, it's called ultranationalism. The opposite of ultranationalism is universal nationalism. Georgism. Georgism, also known as the single tax movement, thinks that although people should own the value that they produce themselves, the value derived from land should belong equally to all members of society. It believes that there should only be one tax, the land value tax, because it views property rights as only extending to the properties of labor and capital, and since land is neither, it's free real estate. Radicalism Radicalism, or radical liberalism, was a historical set of movements within classical liberalism and represented the left wing of the historical movement. Radical liberalism took the principles behind liberalism and applied them to its conclusion. For example, a classical liberal might espouse that a democratic system of government and the right to vote should be given. In turn, a radical liberal would take such a statement to its conclusion that being that women, those without property, immigrants, slaves, etc., should all be given the right to vote. Corporatocracy Corporatocracy is an economic system in which the state intervenes within the economy for the benefit of a select number of corporations, especially in the context of squashing competition. A variant of corporatocracy is lemon socialism, which is a pejorative term for an economic system based on a government that offers subsidies to weak, bad, or bankrupt companies so that they remain in the market. Cyberocracy Cyberocracy represents the advocacy of a government that is largely automated or partially automated and de facto ruled by computers and artificial intelligence. Integralism Integralism is the principle that the church should be the basis of public law and public policy within civil society. It's usually a deeply traditionalist doctrine, and it doesn't like secularism. Reactionarism Reactionarism is a philosophy that advocates for the restoration or preservation of traditional social, political, and economic systems. It is characterized by a rejection of progressive or liberal ideas and a belief that society has become too modern or innovative. Jacobinism It's the philosophy of a complete dismantling of an old system with a completely radical and new structure. It's historically seen as one of the most revolutionary and important movements throughout modern history, as it played a huge role in the French Revolution, where monarchy was abolished and replaced by a republic. I'll be making a part three. Subscribe and activate the bell to see it.